Hello and welcome to Five Minutes in Quarantine. So as you can see, um, yeah, quarantine's taking hold. Our hair's longer, um, our beards are longer. However, I've been doing loads of little bits. I've ordered a load of bits for the bike. Um, obviously, supply chains are a little bit screwed up at the moment, so it's a bit of an issue. Um, so I've been recording loads of little videos of stuff I've been doing to get on with while I'm waiting for uh, you know other stuff to arrive. Ideally, I'd like to be putting the crank in the engine and building the engine up, but um, I'm missing some bits for the crank at the minute. So um, filming various little bits and bobs. Um, so this video won't be in order very like chronologically or anything but um little jobs that i've been doing i'm gonna put up um so yeah um today uh, it's nice and sunny so what i thought what i'm gonna do um rocker boxes i've got the bits for the rocker boxes so i'm gonna build those right so here's the lovely shiny rocker boxes came back from the um soda blasters um all lovely and clean um and all, all nice and shiny because i had these polished as well um, didn't have to have them polished, I just like them polished, they're just nice. So, I've got the um, inlet cap, inlet rockers, exhaust rockers, I've got the I've got the rockers themselves here, I've got the pivots here, the washers that go in there. And the first thing I did before, before uh, actually before I did this video, <clears throat> is I cleaned these. Now, they came back super clean, looked fantastic, and any debris in them would have been soda so if it gets in the engine it's not the end of the world because soda will dissolve and, and crush and stuff however um, it is good practice to make sure it's clean and the reason is it gets caught in the threads and stuff so when you're trying to build it it's a bit of a nightmare so uh, first thing I did was clean it up so I cleaned all the threads in there uh, now I haven't got a tap um, to fit everything so I've cleaned everything up the best I could uh, using a different method so what I've been using uh, it's tin of brake cleaner. Brake cleaner is really good. Um, leaves no residue. So I've been using brake cleaner, and I've got um, a, a brush set. Uh, so little wire brushes and uh, little um, plastic brushes, and I've been through every little bit. So, so you know all these holes that these spindles are going to sit in. These have all been brushed out with brake cleaner. Um, I've cleaned all these holes as well. These. Ah, a little bit of muck in that one still. Just noticed. Um, if you get my little thing. So even though I've cleaned all these up, there's still bits. See that there? So if you can see that, a little bit of debris. Just on the top there. That's been cleaned a few times actually. I'll just get that squirt. Right, now it's clean. So, yeah, all these um, like stud holes and stuff, there was stuff jammed in the bottom of them. So we don't want that because you try and put the stud in and then you can't get it in and it's all gritty and horrible. So all of these have been blown out and then I've gone in with a wire brush, cleaned the threads, then blown them out again. Uh, done both sides. Let me just check this one as well. Yeah, that's all done. So they've all been cleaned out. Um, one thing to be careful on, on these as well is, uh, let me just get a bit of wire, is the oil feeds are here, right? which means there's a little hole just inside there, which goes down into that center piece there, which oils that shaft. So all those have been poked out and blasted with brake cleaner. Make sure everything's super clean. Last thing you want is an oil blockage on a new engine. It's the end of the world. All right, so got the rocker boxes. Um, <clears throat> so what I've got is the rocker spindles here, which come in from this way, like that. So they sit in there. There's little O-rings at the end here, which seal them on the end. I've got some new O-rings to put on. Um, and then the rockers themselves, going to go in there like that um, that way around like that. and then these go up and down and push rods on there and cam actuates those so these all get assembled with these various little washers now these are called 
These are called Thackeray washers, these little spring ones. Which always makes me think of, you know, like some sort of carry on movie, like all me Thackeray's. Yeah, so yeah, the Thackeray washers, and they keep everything spring tensioned onto the inside. Um, and then there's various washers that go various positions. It's, it's pretty critical to get those in the right orientation and right order, otherwise, the oil doesn't flow and they don't lubricate stuff. So, putting this together, you need like three hands, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a faff. Um, so, I'm going to do that. They're all bone dry at the minute and super clean. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of oil on them while I, while I build them. So when I start the engine, it doesn't start dry. So, um, so yeah, so that's where we are with those. Um, I've kept everything separated and kept everything the right side so the, the inlet's going back on the inlet and stuff like that. Still got a bit of brake cleaner coming out of this one. There we go. Nice and clean. Oh, and on this one. Cleaned up. Alright, so cleanliness is everything with this, right? So <clears throat> I'm going to build these up. I'll film it. I'll do it on like a super fast thing so uh, you, you don't get bored. Um, and I'll show you the important bits when we get to the end of it. Alright? Right, so I've got the um, I've got the spindles in and the rockers in. So as you can see, they're they're in there now, and they and they rock, which is what they're supposed to do. Now I haven't put the spindles all the way home yet, right? And the reason I haven't done that is I wanted to show you something. So on the end here, um, these are just kind of like a straight bush that go in the in the um, end of the rocker shafts. Now th there's a little O-ring which seals them. But the problem is, let's move one out of the way for a minute. The problem is that O-ring is quite a bit bigger than the shaft. And as you try and push that in, oh, it goes in. <sighs> right, that's quite a tight hole to get that O-ring in. Now there is a Triumph special tool for that, which is a bit like a piston ring compressor, which crushes the O-ring into place so it doesn't get damaged on the way in. Um, I haven't got one, right? But a bloke in a book in a pub told me that what you can do is get a bit of oil on them to start, right? Because then they slip in nicer. Let's get them nice and oily. Yeah, yeah. Gonna push that out a little bit. I'll push it out. Hang on a minute. Drift. Uh, I seem to have lost my plastic hammer. Right, so I'm just going to pop that back out a little bit. Right, make sure that's really oily properly inside there so it goes in the hole a little bit as well. All right now, that's a bit overkill that really, isn't it? So, the trick is that you get a zip tie and wrap the zip tie around the o-ring and then that crushes the o-ring. Let's see if it works. That crushes the o-ring in there and then we'll knock it in. So I'll set the other one up and we'll try. Right then, so they've got them nice and oily, got the zip ties on. What I've done is I've tightened up the zip ties as much as I can with a pair of needle nose pliers. Give them a twist, pull them tight. That should crush the o-rings down. I also found my plastic hammer, which I love very much. It's my favorite hammer in the world. All right, so now we should 
be able to tap these in and as it goes in it will move the cable tie and the o-ring will slip in with no bother took a very thin sliver off the edge hmm wonder if that'll be alright, should be <clears throat> well, that seems to be pretty much home let's try this one Nice and tight. a thin bit there but it's in did you hear the noise as it went click as, as that's when it's properly home that is so that's really good so that's home get the oil off it We'll soon know if the own rings are any good when it leaks or not. And obviously it's a triumph, so it's supposed to leak anyway. Right, so they're in. These are the ends on the uh these are the thing. Now on a on a big triumph engine the oil feeds at one end, um, but this engine it feeds in the middle. Well feed, uh, the, that, that way on there. So this isn't actually an oil feed. On these engines now on the end here you've got copper washers and some dome nuts now these are rusty and horrible um, there's a couple of washers stuck on that one stuck stuck so I don't want to use those so as part of my spending spree bear with me one second I've got some shiny new ones. So, look at these, lovely. I'm assuming they'll fit. So for some reason, they have two couple washes on these, I think. It seems to have one there. Maybe I'm gonna try one. Maybe see the spacing's out. Yeah, that sort of went tight. So I guess that's why they have extra ones. Look at that, shiny copper washers, nice shiny dome nuts, mmm, and the rockers are ready. So, check they're nice and free, lovely. And also double check, so I've got washer, rocker, Thackeray, washer. Washer, rocker, Thackeray washer. Check that's all the same on all the sides. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, might just get a bit of oil on those while I'm here. Because I don't know how long it'll be before I put the rest of it together. Just want to make sure that they don't 
go dry and horrible and oil's good when you're building an engine. I've seen a lot of people build dry engines. I don't know, not a fan. I like uh, I like everything oily. I guess if it's oily like this, it can pick up a lot of dirt, right? And you don't want that. But um, yeah, I like oily engines. Not on the not on the gasket surface because that's going to need some sealer on it. That looks pretty good. So these now I can set to one side, uh, ready for when I put the top on the engine. That's probably going to be the last thing we do in the build so you won't see these for a while but they're done all right brilliant put them over there at the back so they're out of the way real right another thing i can do before building my crank that i was thinking about this is my lovely new pair of um, service exchange reconditioned barrels or as the Americans like to call them jugs so um, brand uh, almost brand new you know the, yeah pretty much brand new all the fins are perfect it's got a nice new coat of paint on it uh, standard bores uh, with a lovely uh, cross hatch honing on them um, top saw machine flat looks absolutely fantastic obviously these were oversized at one point because you can see uh, the trace of where someone's put you know 10 thou over 20 thou over or whatever uh, but these got new um, liners in all machined out all honed all nice and flat so that head gasket won't leak that'd be great um, but what these need is the tappet blocks put in uh, tappet blocks uh, the cam pushes the tappets up and down in there which go up and down in there, which make the push rods go up and down, which which then actuate, actuate the rockers on the head. So these go in um, as like a, a, a drift fit, push fit, um, and then there's a hole there, and there's a little bolt somewhere, which I don't know where, I'll find them later, which goes in the side there and locates them. Now, I'll just drop that in there, you see, won't go in at the moment all right there's a special triumph drift tool that you can use uh, which has got two prongs on it which sits in the end of there to hammer it in i haven't got one of them unfortunately um so i'm going to put them in but what we need to do is change the dimensions right so i'm going to get this very very cold and then i'm going to get this very very hot and hopefully it will go in pretty easy with just a little bit of tapping that's my plan all right, so I'm going to get uh, my heat gun. I'm going to heat this cast iron up here, get it really, really hot. Um, I'm going to hit this with some uh, brake cleaner, make it super cold, and then I'm going to try knocking them in. That's the plan. Absolutely lovely. You can see it there. It's, um, it's gone in. It's driven all the way home, and I've got the bolt in and the bolt's on in position. That's really up now. I can't really touch it, but yeah, that's uh, bang on. That is really pleased with that. That's where the tappet block is, uh, and then tappets gonna slide in there, and that's what the cam hits. Fantastic. So, just need to do the other one now. Right, so, that's what. Right, so I did actually do the other side. There, see, both sides done now. The reason you didn't see that in time lapse with some funky music is because I totally forgot to press the button on the camera. And there's no way in the world I'm taking it out again. So, it's done. Right, so we've got, um, Inlet and the exhaust both done. So that's the barrels ready to go on. Um, just need the gaskets. 
and the pistons. But the pistons need to go on the crank, the crank needs to go in the engine. I can't put the crank in the engine because I'm waiting for big end shells. Um, so, barrels are done, rocker boxes are done. I just need to look around for other bits and bobs that I can do while I'm waiting there. Oh. Right, another little job. Um, got one of the crankcase halves here. Now, this is full of holes, right? Absolutely full of holes. So, you've got all the casing holes that go around the outside there. You've got the um, uh, primary drive uh, cover that goes on there. There's, um, uh, there's a hole in there. There's the three holes here where the, um, where the alternator gets bolted on. There's um, a gap around that stud because there's a locating sleeve which goes on there. <clears throat> Just on that bit. Um, what else is there? There's the end of the camshafts. So the camshafts go in there. Like that. Now, what we don't want is a load of crap in those. All right, so I've just given those a massive blowout. And this one here has got a little valve bit, which is the oil kind of pressure crankcase vent, which comes down here. Now, all of that was full of like little bits of debris from the blasting. So everything's been blown out. Everything's had a little, one of those little wire brushes drilled down it and up and out of it. Um, everything's been blown out. Once I've cleaned everything out and cleaned all, all the holes up um, and run the wire brush through everything, then I cleaned it again. And after I cleaned it again, then I cleaned it one more time because you just don't want any crap in it. So this now is ready, right? Ready for a crank. But I can't put a crank in it because I've got a crank bearing. Right, so this is where the crank bearing goes in this side here. Uh, now I've got a nice shiny new crank bearing there which goes in there, obviously it doesn't fit. So I've got that, this is the old one here. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with this old bearing, but I've got everything apart, so I may as well stick a new one in while I'm there because you'd be, you'd be silly not to. So I've got a new bearing, uh, then this is the old seal, which is broken. That goes on the other side, that goes on here. All right, so I'll put a new seal on there, I've got a new seal. So. The bearing will go in this side, seal goes in that side, which then means the primary drive sprocket, which is here, then goes on the end of the crankshaft there. Lovely. Right, so um, what I need to do is get this crankcase really, really hot and find a socket that's big enough to go around the outside of that and then I'll get that bearing dropped in. absolutely lovely I've got the case re really hot still really hot um, and I've got the bearing and doused it with brake cleaner to make it really really super cold and I put it on there aimed it all up and I just pressed it like that and it went bang straight home straight to the home point I mean straight in no messing at all I'm just looking around just to check it is actually home looks pretty good to me so I don't think I even need to knock that in I'm just gonna give it a little knock just to just to check that it's down I think it is I ain't going more home than that yeah you heard the click as it went in so that's fantastic get that crank bearing Right, brilliant. So, crank bearings in. As soon as this cools down a little bit, I can put the um, crank seal in here. That's uh, that's what seals the crank. 
Fantastic, fantastic, it's all going well. Uh, right then, actually, I could probably do the seal on video if you want me to. Um, is it too hot? No, it's alright. Right, here's the seal set. There's only three seals on this engine, which is nice. Um, and the one we want. this one there it is which goes in there now you'd think you'd think it goes in that way because the oil pressure would want to get out of it that's not the case it actually goes in that way I don't know why I'm just gonna double check on the drawing uh, yeah that way not really sure why that is, to be honest, but it is. So that's um, that's still pretty hot there. So I might be able to just push that in. So I'll go. Not quite. So rubber hammer time. nicely in flush all the way around the edge yeah. Right. yeah that's it brilliant that means that that then goes in there oh. and that's your primary drive side brilliant thought of another little bit I can do uh, so this is the other side of the crankcase, um, the right hand side, um, again cleaned everything, blew out all the holes, scrubbed out all the holes, well, brushed all the holes, then washed them all out again, then washed them all out again, and again after that just to make sure I hadn't missed anything. Um, the important bit with this side is um, where the oil pump goes, the oil pump goes there, oil pickups go in here, and that pumps oil down to the main bearing there which then goes around the crank. Uh, and up and everywhere um, oil pressure release valve there um, and these are the bits where the, the cams come out so yeah loads and loads of cleaning around here and I've had little bits of wire and brake cleaner poked down here and air, air guns blowing it all out it's all clean now there was there was all grit and stuff in there so um, not grit I mean it was soda but it was dirt right and, and we don't want that in there so that's all gone now uh, gearbox is all cleaned out um, what we can do is we can put the gearbox uh, main shaft uh, bearing on. So there's a bearing, which is this bearing here, which goes on there, and then a circlip which holds it in, and then there's a seal there. So I think I can do that one. That's another little job I can do while I'm uh, waiting for crank parts. So yeah, we'll get that one done. quite nicely so let's turn this round hopefully you can see it a little bit better can you see that uh, uh, there's a bearing yeah yeah so yeah bearing went in nice uh, it's dropped in there so that's all stuck in there now now this one's held in with a circlip so I've got the circlip here the circlip pliers in there. 
make sure that's absolutely in the groove. It doesn't really look like it is there. Ah. In. right so bearing in circle clip in holding it in and then I've got this seal to go in Oops. so this little seal that goes in the um, primary drive uh, well, front sprocket cover so I'll have that one later I'll put that in with the clutch so that'll go on later. So this one, got to go in there. I'll just put a little bit of oil around that so it slides in nicer. Right, so it's going to go in there. Now I haven't got um, a, a what's it to knock that in big enough, right? So. I'm just going to tap it in with the rubber mallet, it should be alright. Uh, yeah, that's two. Two on the piss, it's got to go in fairly even. So that is where the um, the, the, the socket, uh, the sprocket for the final drive chain goes. So this was the, the final drive sprocket. Uh, oh, too high. Let's, let's go down here, right? That's the final drive sprocket. This one. Now, it was pretty mank anyway. Um, but if you look, let's see if we can see on the thing. If you look at the teeth on that, they're all worn and like they're hook shaped. I don't know if you can see if I bring it closer. They're all, all kind of hooked one way, which is pretty bad. Right, so I've got a nice new one, which is here. It's an 18 tooth the same. All right, uh, just wonder if you can see the difference. The teeth look so much better on the new one. So on the other side of these, they've got that kind of um, sort of shank bit machined on it. So that will fit in that seal like that. You see that? And then that's where the gearbox drives the back wheel. So that's all nice now. I'll put that in there because that's a new one. That with my jump parts over there. Um, I think that's probably it for today. Um, looking around now, I can't see any more bits that I can get on with at the moment. So I'm still waiting for parts. A couple of bits on back order. I guess the next job I could do without um, without the uh, all, all the other parts with the crank ready, I can do the cylinder head. <clears throat> so I think next time what I'll do is I'll put new valve guides in. And, and rebuild the cylinder head, put the valves in, the, uh, and grind the valves in and stuff. That'd be a, a good next uh, session. Until then, like, subscribe, stay safe. Big up to the NHS.